Hi, buddy. And welcome to podcast 11.2, the last one forever, and then we will go. Um, we're going to look at applications of the electromagnetic spectrum. Visible light tells you the type of atom. Visible light tells you the concentration. And infrared radiation does types of molecules. So let's go ahead. Some of the electromagnetic spectrum is certainly damaging to tissues. Ionizing radiation is damaging to tissues. Anything is energetic or more than ultraviolet is ionized. So radio, microwave, infrared, visible, non-ionizing. UV, x-ray, gamma ray is ionizing. So that means those are certainly damaging. Okay? Applications. Radio waves. All of these, I'm including waves. It's used for a radio. TV, Wi-Fi, and GPS that could easily convert it by wires and speakers into sound. Microwave, it, most often you think of microwave ovens, turn molecules to heat them. We'll show that in a second. Infrared, identify the parts of molecules. It's also used for remote control and thermal imaging. Visible light identifies atomic spectra. So this means you, I can tell what kind of element. It's a sodium, and I can tell by looking at it. Or it's a helium. And it can also find the M, which is molarity of colored solutions, but only colored. Ultraviolet, boy, this doesn't sound quite so nice. Um, it causes skin cancer, and it's blocked by the ozone layer. Um, it also causes tanning, which, oh, isn't that the most wonderful thing in the world? Woohoo! X rays penetrate soft tissues, but are stopped by bone. They're also used in material analysis. So, for example, if you want to see um, where a pipe is leaking or where a bridge is cracking, x-rays can show that. Gamma radiation from radioactive elements. So, and there's a new gamma knife. Well, it's not new anymore. So, there's a gamma knife procedure for cancer where it will affect the cancer area and less of the rest of the body. Microwaves, like microwave ovens. So, I'm basically focusing on only the oven part of microwaves. Microwaves also do radar. But I'm talking about the oven part because that's what we're most interested in because I'm really hungry right now. Polar molecules, typically water, rearrange themselves to align with the charged field created by microwaves. So you know how we had waves where we said, this is a crest, this is a trough, right? If this is the positive end, remember this is the negative end of water. So it aligns itself to, be, to create a little bond, right? And when it creates bonds, it releases energy. Then this is the negative end and it flips to get the positive end. And then the positive end comes back up, and there's the negative. And as it flips, the molecular rotation um, generates heat. Visible light can barcode an element through electron jumping and falling. We talked about electron jumping and falling last time. But this hopefully can show you the barcode idea I have. See how sodium is certainly different than mercury, which is certainly different than lithium, which is certainly different than hydrogen. Okay, So you can identify an atom based upon... Um, light spectro spectroscopy. So it's important to tell what elements are in something, um, and then you can use that for molecules to say that. Visible light, you need to know this. Red, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, which is the exact same thing, as violet. Grant, leader. Please come to A106. Grant, leader. Please come to A106. Come on, Grant, leader. So to help you remember this, remember red is the lowest, and I think we learned that infrared, infrared is, I almost pulled a tanium, spelled it there. Infrared is close to the red. And violet, more energetic than violet, oops, is ultraviolet. Ultra. I'm not violet, I'm ultraviolet. This isn't chemistry. Ultra well, Colored solutions absorb other colors. They reflect the color you see. That's how you see it. Light. Spectrophotometers measure the light that's absorbed. That's what the lab that we did was like. So we had to pick the right wavelength. Darker solutions are more concentrated. So let's take a look at how we can use that. So for example, if I'm looking at darker solutions here, see how this one's very light? it would have an absorbance of zero because there isn't any in there. Notice how if it's the concentration is 0.05, it's greater. 
If I doubled it, oh, look, it about doubled. If I tripled it, oh, look, it about tripled. If I quadrupled it, oh, look, it about quadrupled. Okay. So absorbance doubles, concentration doubles, and so on. The slope of the line may be different depending on the solution. CR plus 3 would be different than CR plus 2. So what that would mean would be the line for CR plus 3 might be a line like this. The line for Cu plus 2 might be a line that's more like that. But they would have the same. They would both be a linear relationship. Okay. So what happens in a spectrophotometer is the little device that we saw in our lab. You put a little test tube. They called it a cuvette. But basically, it's a test tube. And you shoot beams of light at it. And then because this is colored, it absorbs some of them. Don't nerd, nerd, nerd. So if I shoot and boop, 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 and out comes boom, 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 then I can determine the ratio of it and do enough compare it and figure out. Infrared radiation helps us identify parts of molecules. Okay, so we need to know that infrared identifies parts of molecules. Okay, so an alkane. Well, what we're going to focus on is not really the. Well, we'll we'll take a look at it. This has a line of around, let's see, 16, 17, around 1,700. Oh, no. Oh, 1,700 to 1,705, 1,750 to 1,705 would mean that it has a C double bonded O. <gasps> Look, it's a C double bonded O. That means it's an aldehyde or a ketone. Hey, check that out. Woohoo! Okay. Now it's got a little bit of 3,200. Oops. Okay. A little bit of 3200, but it doesn't jump out. These guys right here are ones we don't need to know because we don't have anything in the 1300 range, right? Toot, 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 toot. So we're safe. Now, when I'm looking over here, 3000 to 2800, 3000 to 2800, not a big peak. I know there's stuff here, but not a big peak. Does this have 3000 to 2800? Oops, this is going backwards. 3000 to 2800. Um, it's got some 3000 to 2800 here, so it probably has um, C's and H's. Hey, look, it's got C's and H's. Okay. And alcohol is 3,600 to 2,000. It's a broad band. See how broad this is? 3,000 to 3,200. There's 3,000 to 3,600. Or 3,200 to, to uh, 3,600 will be a broad band. See how that is a very broad? Eh, I circled very badly. This right here, so 3,600 to 3,200. And it mentions that it's broad. There's a broad peak. Okay. So that's what we're looking for. Now, what should you be able to do? Given this, draw the important part of an amine and an alcohol. So here's an amine. It'll have one band at 3,300 to 3,500. So, so I'm going to give this number right here. Well, let's say this is 3,400. And I'm going to have one band. Whoop. And then it says 3,500. To 3,300, I should have two bands. So, whoop, whoop. And then, I'm running out of sound here. And then at, so I'll label these 3,500, 3,300. My handwriting is getting worse. Wait a minute. I didn't do so well with that, did I? What I want to make sure that I have is a 3,500 to 3,300. I should have one band. And do you see how it's weird that it says you've got more than one thing on here? So we can have... So there's how it's one band and two bands at the same time. Okay, there's an amine. If I were to draw an alcohol, 3600 to 3200, let's call this 3400, I would have one broad band. Whoa. See how I made it broad? That's it. So basically you should be able to look for a distinct broad band for it. Well, let me just do one more of these because I was unhappy with the way that that went. So, if I have this thing and I show you, there's a broad band, right? A broad band could be an alcohol. Any other broad bands they mentioned? Here's another one, okay? 3,600 to 3,200 would be an alcohol. So, if this was um, 3,400, it would be an alcohol. But if it was a carboxylic acid, um, oops, I picked one that would overlap. Um, if it was carboxylic acid, it might be at 2,700. 
and I know I'm just changing this number, but this could be 2700, right? Because it could be in that. So basically, given this, you'll be able to pick them out. And that's it. So again, let's look at the real ones and see how they've got all kinds of junk in it, and we're just going to make an idealized look at it. Okay, so we just have an idealized setup. You need to know visible light identifies the elements. Visible light identifies concentrations. IR identifies molecules, which are functional groups. Ionizing is high energy, short wavelength, and hurts tissues. And we are gone, cops go. Gone, cubs go. Toodles.